Improvement in quarterback play in Minnesota has been one of the under the radar developments this year as the Vikings get themselves to six and one. And how about Cordell Stewart yesterday? That was not Cordell Stewart, Kirk Cousins, <laughs> the modern day Cordell Stewart. At least the way he was running the football. <laughs> I'm still thinking about the Cordoza line. The run by Kirk Cousins was an optical <laughs> illusion to me because it starts off kind of looking like slow motion Tom Brady, although it's not slow motion, like lumbering. And then Kirk Cousins turns the corner and he's just gone. I, I've never seen anything like it. I think there's no way this guy – I mean, I'm just thinking, is he going to maybe get the first down? And he keeps going all the way into the end zone. That was the first touchdown of the game by the Vikings, and it was typical Vikings 2022, back and forth, trail in the second half, find a way. Here he is on third and four from the 17. I'm thinking, well, he's, he's, no, he's not even going to make it to the line of scrimmage. He's not going to get the first down. And there he is, bursting into the end zone. Kirk Cousins – with a rushing touchdown for the Minnesota Vikings. And uh, he, he, he had a decent day, 232 passing yards, a couple of touchdowns. Dalvin Cook had 111 rushing yards. Alexander Madison chipping in, nice little change of pace. Again, I mentioned earlier they're playing Buffalo soon. Maybe go heavy with those two guys. But you know, the, the Vikings just kind of checked the boxes, and they get it done. They contained Kyler Murray, sacked him multiple times. Darius Smith had three sacks. And, and they weathered the storm. They just – every game mm-hmm. – they weather the storm. The team comes back, the team takes the lead, and the Vikings just find a way. And at a certain point, it's no longer a fluke. It's just kind of who you are. You find a way in the fourth quarter to win football games. Right, yes. I, I, I like the way you put that, weathering the storm, because they were able to do that, right? And, and that's something that you have to be able to do. Um, and I just I like the way the Vikings fought back at basically every turn. And then right there, you see the five-yard touchdown to Osborne that, that basically seals that game right there. So, I mean, I like the way they're playing. I love how they fight back. I love how you get Justin Jefferson involved. You know, and you make him be one of these really great receivers that can line up from anywhere, and it makes him such a matchup nightmare. Oh, I love the ways Darius Smith played yesterday. You mentioned the three sacks. He was really controlling the game, went out with an injury, and then came back in there as well. So the Vikings have a lot of stuff going for them right now, and when you are able to stack these wins like they have early on in the season, it makes everything else easier for you because you are already in position to win your division. Right. And they, they don't have to worry about the, oh my gosh, when are they going to lose a game talk either? They can just continue to do what they do and do it well. And when you're gashing teams in the run like they are, I mean, you, I mean, you talked about it with Dalvin Cook and the way Madison was running. It's almost like, well, why are you passing so much, man? I mean, it, when you pass, there are three things that can happen and two of them are bad. So I love how they can lean on Cook and Madison to do what they need to do to win games. The thing to remember, though, upcoming schedule. Look, they have to go to Washington. Commanders have been looking pretty good lately, and maybe they'll actually have a decent home crowd this weekend. Unlikely, but who knows? Who knows? Commanders fever. Catch it. Then it's the Cowboys coming to Minnesota. Then it's short week game against the New England Patriots. So they have some they have some oh. some tests coming up. The Patriots are not going to be easy on Thanksgiving night. No, I, I don't I don't uh, wow. Thanksgiving d- is that soon. My gosh. Yeah, it's 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 coming. It's coming. Um am I missing a game in there? I don't think I am. I don't think so. I they've don't got think so. the Commanders, no, it's, it's... they've got the Cowboys. I don't know. Maybe I am missing a week. Maybe there's one more in there. Oh, the Bills. The Bills. The Bills. I have forgotten. The, you said the that's, Bills. That's, that's another reason. Exhibit A for winter is coming for the Minnesota Vikings in more ways than one is that the Bills are looming after the Commanders. So a couple of road games and a couple of home games, and we'll see if the Vikings can keep it going. There was a thought that I had at one point. Oh, Zadarius Smith. I spoke to him after the game as well on what they did to stop Kyler Murray. And there's a concept out there called the cage rush, and that's what they used, Mm -hmm. where you you maintain the integrity of your lanes, almost like, you know, a kick coverage team or a punt coverage team. And instead of just trying to get to the quarterback as fast as you can and opening up these gaps where he can just disappear, it's a more methodical closing of the cage, and then it just collapses. And the other benefit of it as well is that – 
he can't see. If you maintain yeah. your spot in front of him, you know he can't see. So it's all about keeping him in the pocket, not giving him an avenue out of the pocket, not giving him an opening where he can slip through a crack and run for 30 yards. And that was the first thing that Aries Smith did. He praised all the other guys for executing the plan. They worked on it all week long. He was the beneficiary with the free sacks. You know how sacks go. There's an element of randomness when it comes to actually being the one to get the quarterback down. It is that swarming that you see that, that makes it happen. And they swarmed in a very controlled way. And that was their plan for, for slowing down Kyler And we've seen other teams do that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You still have to execute the plan. But that's right. the that for a short, fast quarterback, that's the only way to do it. It is the only way to do it. I mean, back in the day when it's my second Rams reference, but indulge me, uh, when I was covering the Rams and you know, they were going up against Russell Wilson every year, two times a year, that's the thing exactly it that they would talk about, keeping your rush integrity, making sure that you contain all those lanes because that's how you can get in there and collapse the pocket, bring him down and make sure that he's not making those special plays where he gets outside the pocket and then he can see and then he can either use his legs to run or he can you know, target whatever really good receiver he has in Kyler Murray's case, DeAndre Hopkins, and just get him the ball, right? He, if he can't see and you are preventing those rush lanes from being utilized, then that's exactly what's going to happen. And that's why you're going to get Kyler Murray down. And that's how you're going to get those sacks. So I, I love hearing that from Zadarius Smith. And I did really like the way that they executed that yesterday. DeAndre Hopkins, by the way, had a very big game for the Arizona Cardinals. 12 catches, 159 yards, and a touchdown. Like through the first half, he had five catches on five targets. He had a great touchdown catch. He's played extremely well, but again, do they have enough around him? And and they could have won this game. Woo. It, it comes back to what I said. The Vikings just find a way late. The Cardinals could have won this game. They fought back from down 14-3. Talking to Zedaria Smith, I got the impression that that the Vikings believed once the Cardinals were down 14-3, they would just give up based upon what they heard from Patrick Peterson and Jordan Hicks, a couple of former Cardinals mm. who were very motivated to win the game. There's video yeah. of Patrick Peterson down on the field saying, I want to talk to Steve Kahn. I want to talk to him face-to-face. -face. He's running from me. So there, there's some hostility there between especially Peterson and the Cardinals organization. We saw some of that yesterday. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.